How's it going everybody? Welcome back for another edition of the FDU Men's Soccer Report presented by FDUnights.com. I'm your host Gavin Neville and we're joined as always by the head coach Seth Rowland. Coach, thanks for being here today. My pleasure Gavin. It was a wild week for the FDU Men's Soccer Team as they travel to NJIT to take on the Highlanders in a non-conference match. Uh, you guys trailed early on 3-0. So when, when you go into halftime 3-0, what are you guys thinking? <laughs> well, we weren't very happy. And uh, going down 3-0 uh, was not where we wanted to be. Uh, so we spoke about a few things uh, and addressed a, a few topics and uh, came out very aggressively and helped turn the game by uh, forcing their goalkeeper to come out. Uh, got a second yellow card on a, a challenge, questionable challenge on David Cornwell, and then we were just pressuring them uh, the entire second half. And we, our goal was just to get one at a time. We got the first finally at, with 23 minutes to go, and then we just kept pressuring and pressuring until we got another one, another one, and the winner with four minutes to go. Here with Knights midfielder Jack McVeigh. Uh, Jack, when you are down three nothing, you have a PK. What's what's your mindset when you step up to take it? Well, we're down three 0 so you know we have to get one goal. I need to, as a captain, I want to get the team rolling. You know, I want to step up and be prepared. But um, as it was, it happened to be it was a PK, and it's something that you practice over and over again in, in training. And uh, so you come into it in a game and you feel like it's, it's nothing different, you know, it, there's obviously more pressure to it, but right. you try to think in your mind, you have the mindset that it's just the same as it was it, what you do in practice. You try to do the same routine you do and you try to put the ball back in the net like you do in practice. And I guess facing your old team, NJIT, what is it like to play against them and beat them? Um, well, going in, it was, you know, it was a very emotional game, but you, like again, like like I said before, it's the same mindset. You try to go into it as like it's every other game. Right. You know, you don't want to do anything different. You want to go out and perform. You know, it's a team. It's not an individual sport. So you try to just help your team to do the best they can. And you know, like I said, it's just go out and do the same thing you do every week. And then as an offense to get four goals and a half, what was that like for you guys? Well, I've been here a year, like the past year, and this is my second year now, and we haven't scored four goals in any game. So you know. I was, I was surprised that we got it, but I knew I knew we were capable of it. I knew we were a big team, and uh, as soon as we put one away, I knew that the, the doors would open and we could just start putting them through because we had them all in under pressure all, our, all first half. We were just unlucky to concede them three goals, a few mistakes, but as soon as one goal went in, I knew we could uh, get back in it and, first of all, just get three goals and then you know get the winner at the end. Well, Jack, uh, hopefully we can keep the offense going, and thanks for your time. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So when you're down 3 nothing, are the types of changes that you're making, is that kind of mentally as a standpoint or are there tactical changes that go into it as well? Well, some of it's mental in that we just were not uh, challenging ourselves and focused enough and disciplined enough and committed enough. And some of it is we made a number of tactical changes, both personnel at halftime and then tactically with our system. And uh, just to put them under pressure and to try and smother them. Uh, they did a great job punishing us for mistakes we made in the first half and our goal was to be uh, uh, more committed, not make mistakes, make them make mistakes by being aggressive and pressuring them. So our mentality had to be better, our discipline had to be better, we had to be sharper with the ball and we made some tactical adjustments, yes. So I guess when you guys are in the midst of this comeback, was there ever a point where you said we have a chance we're going to win this game? Well, I knew we had to score a goal first, obviously, and we were pressuring them and doing well, but still, with 24 minutes to go, it was still 3-0 that uh -huh. we were down. Right. And the question was, were we ever going to get the first goal? And we knew if we got a first goal, that then maybe th momentum could build. Once we got the first goal, you know, we just kept going, and, and we took it from there. We're here in the FDU men's soccer locker room with Knights forward Nico Wright. Wright had a huge game with two goals and an assist in the second half against NJIT. Uh, what was working for you? Well, the tempo was there. We were down 3 nothing, and coach gave us his 30 talk at halftime that we need to get the W, so we just dig deep and we got it. Uh, could you talk to us about um, your two goals and kind of how the plays uh, un unfolded for you? 
Well, first of all, normally I don't score headers. So the first one was a header. I was really, I was so shocked that I didn't even celebrate. If you watch the <laughs> tape, I didn't celebrate. So that was a shot. But the second one I took with composure and it came and I just finished it. Um, was that a, would you say it's a big league performance? I know you say big league. Can you Definitely. just explain what, what big league means? Well, uh, big league was a promotion group I started back home. <laughs> I'm the CEO of big league. So me coming here into America, I just want to like promote my organization to the fullest. And that was a big time. And I came up big. That, big was, league. that was a big league performance. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. How would you assess your team overall? Well, I'd say we have to stop allowing goals. We have uh, been bleeding goals, uh, and everyone is responsible for that. Eight goals in two games is absolutely unacceptable. And uh, we are going to make some adjustments, and we need to get much better uh, in how we defend as a team. And if we don't, then we're not going to be successful. Uh, in addition, we need to continue to take care of the ball on the offensive side of things, possess it, also be able to counterattack effectively. Um, on the positive side, we showed uh, a, a great frame of mind and a great intensity and great strength of character coming back from a 3-0 deficit at halftime. So, you know, there are a lot of lessons to be learned and we just have to come out every day in training and every moment of every game trying to get better. I guess in the, you face uh, Albany at home on Friday, a team who um, has wins over Towson and a tough Yale team that you guys played last year. What are you expecting to see from Albany and then also from your team? Well, they'll be very disciplined. They'll be very organized, well coached. They're just coming off a big 2-0 win at Yale yesterday. Um, and so I expect it's going to be a hell of a game. Uh, what I expect from us is to defend better as a team, to be sharper, to be more focused, as I've said, uh, to be redundant as I'm being. Uh, but these are the simple things and the clear facts that have to happen if we're going to be a good team this year. Well, Coach, it's always fun to talk about wins. So hopefully we can come back next week and uh, talk about some more wins. Uh, Let's hope so. Hopefully beat Albany. All right, Ross, uh, thanks, Knights fans.